What's up everybody, Justice Good here and today I'm going to show you how to create a Photoshop background similar to the one that I have on my desktop right now. So the first thing you want to go to is File New and if you don't know your screen resolution, check out that website, what is my screen resolution? Just Google it. Mine is 1920 by 1200. So start this new project and the first thing you want to do is go to Filter, Render, Clouds. Now for the first like five steps, it's going to be all filters, so just follow me. Next, filter, render, difference, clouds. Next, you go to filter, stylize, extrude. And set it on pyramids, 30 size, 30 depth, random, and that's it. Hit OK. Now go to filter, stylize, find edges. And it should look like this. Next, go to Stylize, Solarize. So now we have this grid tech thing, we can say. Now go to your layer, right click, duplicate, and hit OK. Or you can Command J to duplicate. And on this layer, Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, to about 3 pixels. And go to Sketch, Halftone Pattern. But when you do this, make sure that your colors are set to the default black foreground and the default white background. Once you reach this menu, set the pattern type to circle. Leave the size at about 2 or 3, maybe even 1 if you want. And set the contrast to about 9. Again, make sure that it's on black and white. Like so. Okay. Next step. We're going to set that to screen and lower the opacity. Later on in this tutorial, we're going to come back and adjust these settings to see what looks best. But for now, we're going to continue on with a new layer. Grab your gradient tool, set it to the black and white gradient with the circular setting, and drag out from the middle to the edge. And it's going to look like this. If it doesn't, then make sure you have reverse checked on your gradient and lower the opacity of this to about 76 make sure it's on multiply next we're going to create a new adjustment layer we're going to do a color balance to add some color for the midtones you want to use the color that that you want your background to be so I'm going to pull the green up a little bit maybe a little blue or yellow Pretty much you just want to play around with color balance. What usually looks good in color balance is opposite shadows and highlights and midtones. So you don't want to just boost the green up on everything. You want to have some contrast. And if it's looking too strong, you can lower the opacity on color balance. Next, create a new layer and apply your image. And take that and filter, gauge, and blur it to about 7. And set that on screen. Now if it's looking a little bright still, you can go back to the original duplication and lower it even more to about 25. And just kind of play around with your settings to see what looks best. Next create a new adjustment layer and this time we're going to use a photo filter just to add a little bit of a different color. I'm going to use a cooling filter, a little blue. Actually, I'm going to use an underwater filter. And adjust the density to however strong you want the color to look. Preserve luminosity or not preserve luminosity. I'm going to check to not preserve it so that way the whites get taken over. And on a new layer, grab your brush tool, grab the first soft brush, and set it to about 20 or so pixels. So what we're going to do with this is head over to the brushes palette. And if you can't see that, it's under window, brush, F5. But it should be on the side there. I'm using CS5. 
So turn the spacing up all the way on your brush tip shape. Turn scattering up all the way. And turn shape dynamics size jitter to 100%. So with your settings like these, you want to just slightly brush over the whole thing. And make sure you're using, I'm going to use white, but we're going to turn it to a gray later. So if you want, you can just use gray. So with a gray brush, with these settings, go through and create this glowing effect. So once you're happy with the amount, you can set it on whatever blending mode you like really. Overlay looks alright, but I wanted to set it on color dodge. And absolute white does not work with color dodge. So you can go to image adjustments, brightness contrast, and turn those down to get the white to turn to gray. That way, it can be set to color dodge with better results. Also, I'm going to put it under my photo filter layer so it gets a little bit of that underwater tint. And that's the final result. Uh, I apologize if I sounded like a zombie during this tutorial. Um, I'm kind of sick right now, but I'm on my way to feeling better. I just wanted to get this tutorial out there because I've had it sitting around for a while. And I'm trying to start uploading more. And as a bonus, if you watched this far into the video, while I was trying to make this, I was I was experimenting, and I came up with like three or four different backgrounds. I'll throw those in the link below. That's these right here. So you could use those for whatever you want, pretty much. Just credit me if you use them. Check out my channel for more tutorials, and I'll see you next time.